So here we are presented with another long story in, the, in John. We read uh, only the last half of it. In the first part, uh, Jesus is with his disciples, and they, they get word from Mary and Martha that Lazarus is sick. Now, what's important about this is that they had left and gone away from Jerusalem. Bethany is very close to Jerusalem. And the last time Jesus left there, they were uh, ready to stone him. They were ready to kill him. Um, and so they, they left to get away from the crowds who were trying to do Jesus harm. And uh, Mary and Martha, who live in, there in Bethany, close to Jerusalem, sent for uh, Jesus to tell him that the one that he loved, Lazarus, uh, was sick. Uh, and then um, he tells the disciples that you are going to see the glory of God. Uh, he said, let's go. Uh, two days, he waited for two days, and then he said, let's go uh, and see him. And Thomas stands up and says, um, don't, or the disciples say, don't you remember that uh, they were going to kill you last time you were there? And then Thomas says, let's go and die with him. And so they go and they find that uh, Lazarus is dead. Um, before they get there, uh, Martha comes out and talks to, to Jesus. And this is where uh, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And then... Um, Mary, I'm, I'm sorry, Martha and Jesus have a conversation there. Martha goes back. Uh, Jesus didn't ask for Mary, but Martha tells Mary, the teacher is looking for you. And then we come into the story that uh, we just read. What, what I want to do today is what's interesting in this story is there's a lot of different emotions going on. But we see that the way Jesus has his emotions is different from the way we have our emotions. Our emotions tend to make us, we, we allow them to control us. We allow them to, to help us make decisions about things. And, and they, they, they can get in the way of us living the life that Jesus died to give us. They can get in the way of us learning to listen and follow Jesus. So let's look at the, the emotions in this story. First of all, you have the disciples. They're afraid. Anybody ever been afraid before? Um, they're afraid that Jesus and, and them are going to be killed if they go back to Jerusalem. We don't often have a fear that we're going to be killed, but we have a lot of other fears. We have fears of losing things. We have fears of not being in control. Uh, a lot of crazy things happen when we're driving around or riding around in cars, and there's some scary things there. The way some people drive, or if you can call it driving. We do have a lot of fears in our lives. We also have fears like, uh, you, you know, I'm afraid I'm never going to get better from this illness or from this injury. I'm afraid of my own death. I'm afraid of of losing people around me. I'm afraid of the economic things that are, the financial things that are happening in my life. I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the future. We have a lot of these fears. And then also we have Thomas. Thomas just stands up and says, let's go die with him. Uh, this is uh, something we do sometimes. It's, it, it, we, 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 we get this sudden burst of, um, I don't know, heroism or this is the right thing to do. And we, we just do it. Even though we may not really know what the outcome is going to be, we kind of cast all uh, um, control aside and, and just make a rash decision to do something. Then we look at Martha. I kind of identify with Martha because uh, she does things that I probably do. Both Martha and Mary, when they meet Jesus, they say, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Um, but uh, when Martha and Jesus are having a conversation, Martha confesses Jesus to be the Lord and the Messiah. She's got all the right words. She knows what to say. And I, a, a lot of us, you know, especially if we've been a Christian for a long time, we, we know the, what the words are. We've memorized the Lord's Prayer. We've mostly memorized the, the creed that we sing we have a lot of songs memorized. We, we have a lot of words. We even have some scripture memorized. We know where some of the stories are in the Bible. 
We, we know what the words are of Christianity. She knows, Martha knows the right answer when, when uh, she's having this conversation with Jesus. But, but does it really take her in the direction Jesus is going? This is a question we need to ask ourselves. She says to him, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God who has come into the world. But then she keeps taking charge of things. She goes back and she tells Mary, because she, she's kind of disturbed that Mary's just sitting there in the house, mourning. And, you know, that's sort of what you're supposed to do in this culture. But Mary's been sitting there perhaps for a long time, at least too long for Martha. Martha's, you know, the, the get up and do things kind of person. So she tells Mary, the, the teacher, he's calling you. So Mary gets up and runs to, to where Martha is. You remember the story in Luke where, where Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet and Martha is preparing the meal and running around the house. And what does Martha do? Martha comes to Jesus and say, Jesus, would you tell her to get up and help me? Martha is trying to take things into control because she knows what's supposed to happen and she, she's trying to be the boss of everybody, even to Jesus. Those are the emotions and how Martha deals with her emotions. We look at Mary. Mary is just wrapped up in the mourning for her brother. She's lost her brother. She's more of an emotional person uh, as far as the, you know, the, 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 the mourning of this, uh, the loss of the brother. Um, she runs to Jesus when he hears he's called for her, but she's still weeping. And, and the people who are with her, they, they see how quickly she gets up. They go, they're weeping as well. She's... She's just caught up in the, she, she can't do anything else other than weep at this moment. And then we come to Jesus. Now, Jesus is faced with a number of emotions during this story. First of all, it starts off the story with us being told that Jesus loves Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Does that mean that Jesus doesn't love anybody else? Does that mean that Jesus doesn't love me, doesn't love you? It doesn't mean that. But we tend to think, you know, if someone loves perfectly, that person loves everybody the same. But think about it. Everybody is different, right? So Jesus' love for each person is going to look a little bit different. And there was some kind of a special relationship that Jesus had with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. I, I can't pretend to know what that was, why it was different, or why, why it's even mentioned that way. But Jesus did have a love that, for these three that other people noticed. Jesus is not afraid to go back to those who would kill him. And it seems like he chooses to go back, number one, to glorify God is what he says, but he also goes back because these are his friends. These are people he cares for. If you think about it, Lazarus probably would have been the breadwinner in the family. If he's passed away, how are Mary and Martha going to live now? They, have no, they would have no income. Uh, women didn't work back then. So... There's a lot of things going on here for this family, not only the loss of their brother, but perhaps loss of income and who knows what else. Jesus goes back there, not afraid of what he may find there. He's also very confident in, the, if you look at the prayer he prays, he says, Father, I, I know that you have heard me. That means that he's been talking to the Father before this, before he says this out loud. In fact, I think it's very easy for us to see when we look at Jesus that Jesus has this ongoing conversation with the Father. Everything he's doing, he's talking with the Father about as he goes through all of this. And twice we're told that he's deeply moved and troubled in spirit. The, uh, the, the verb, one of these verbs that's used here twice is the same verb that they use for the snorting of a horse. And it's hard to know if, that, if that's anger or if it's frustration or what it is, but that, that's, we don't know how to translate it other than deeply moved in English. But he snorted is what, is what it really says. He snorted. I won't snort for you because that, you, know, you, you know what a snort sounds like, right? He snorted. Uh, th there's something that he's feeling. Jesus, Jesus is a feeling human being, just like you and I are. 
He, he's deeply disturbed by something that's going on. Maybe he's just disturbed because his beloved friend has died and he is mourning with the sisters. Maybe he's disturbed because these people are not getting it. These people are not understanding what I've come to show him. Maybe he's disturbed because he's come face to face with his enemy, death, who he himself is going to face in a few weeks. Maybe he's just disturbed because death is still has its hold on human beings, and he hasn't yet freed them from that. Anyway, he's disturbed. So as I'm reading this story, and, and you can do the same thing as you're reading through this story, ha, we can identify with some of these emotions. Some of these emotions are emotions we've had. I've been afraid of things. I've gotten angry when things don't go my way, although I can say that I get that anger much less than I used to. I'm, I'm much more go with the flow than I used to be. I used to be kind of like Thomas. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and I, I just, I made all kinds of rash decisions. You can ask Kiriko the story. So hopefully she's forgotten most of them. But I made a lot of really, really bad decisions uh, when I was younger, especially with money and all kinds of things. So I can identify with that. I feel good when things, when good things happen, when it's a nice day, when I can take a walk on the beach and I find a really cool looking rock. I can enjoy those things. I've lied when it suited my purposes to try to manipulate other people just like Martha did. I think I have all the right words just like Martha did. I can confess and say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior just like Martha did. I felt like weeping when something or someone was lost. And I've also felt like weeping when, when I feel like people aren't getting it. Uh, almost all of the emotions in, in this story I, I've felt in, in my life. How about you? How do you feel right now? How, do, how have you felt the last, the last few weeks? What kinds of emotions have you had? Have you been afraid? Have you been happy? Have you been angry? Have you thought to yourself, I really don't like this? Have you thought to yourself, I really like this? Have you done things to try to be in control, to try to get things to happen the way you want them to happen? Have you said the right words, but deep down inside you don't really know if you really believe them or not, or if it really makes any difference? The point of all this, though, is, is what do we do with those emotions? When we see how Jesus deals with these emotions, it's, it's different than all of the other people in this story. It's different than you and I. Do our emotions change how we think and how we act? Yes, they do. Because we're not as sure as Jesus is of who he is and his connection to the Father. That's why we let our emotions to, to push us around. Let's keep talking about this because there's one other whole part to this. The emotions of the people in this story bring them to question God. And, and sometimes we don't really think about what it means when we question God. If we ask God, why did you allow this to happen? Or Jesus, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. When we say those kinds of things, we're saying, God, I know better than you what's supposed to happen. That's what we're saying, isn't it? God, why did you allow it to happen the way I didn't like or the way I don't understand? Doesn't that mean I'm saying to God, you should have done it differently? I know better than you, God, what's supposed to happen the way things are supposed to unfold. And a lot of that's coming from my emotions. It's not necessarily coming because I have great wisdom and I understand these things. It's because I don't like it, because of my feelings. We ask a lot of things to God where we're really saying, God, you should have done something differently. God, you could have saved him, why didn't you? You could have answered our prayers, why didn't you? You could have kept him from dying, why didn't you? You could have preventing, uh, prevented people from seeking to kill you. Why didn't you? You could have prevented suffering and pain and 
all kinds of bad things in this world and in my life. Why didn't you, God? God, why did you allow this to happen? Why did you not answer our prayers? We can question God all we want, but what good is it going to do? What good is it going to do to ask these questions of God? Is it going to make God say, oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I was busy and I just didn't get to it. Is that how God's going to answer us? What's going to happen in our relationship with God if we keep saying, God, you're not doing it the way I want you to do it? Is that going to help us draw closer to God? I don't think so. I don't think so. We, we want to be in control, but there's so many things that we don't have any control over. Why, why, do, we, why do we do this to ourselves? I believe very strongly that it's because we are not secure in knowing the Father and His love for us. We are not secure in knowing that no matter what happens, that connection with the Father can be like what Jesus had. That connection knowing whatever my emotions are, whatever the circumstances are, whatever happens, God is moving towards something. God is doing something here and I'm going to be a part of it. It's going to be painful at times. It's going to bring up all kinds of emotions at times. But I'm still going to keep going because I trust that the Father is going the right way. Whatever happens. That's how Jesus goes through this. Jesus wept. Notice Jesus' demeanor through this whole story. He is sure of who he is. How many of us go through life completely sure, completely at ease with who we are, who we know ourselves to be? Very few of us. Jesus is sure of who the Father is. He has utter, complete, absolute confidence that the Father knows what he's doing, and he completely gives his will up to that Father's will, completely. Jesus is sure that whatever the Father is doing, that he's going to participate in it, whatever the Father asks him to do. Yes, Jesus has emotions just like you and I, but they do not control him the way they control us. They move him, but they don't change what he's doing. That's the big difference. How beautiful is the love that the Father and the Son have for each other. And we can enter into that love. And if we enter into that love step by step, we'll find ourselves aligning ourselves with what they are doing and not just with what our emotions and other people's emotions drive us to do. Jesus wept. There's, the word weeping comes in English here a lot, but John, the writer of this, was very careful to use a different word for Jesus' weeping than for Mary and the Jews weeping. He's very careful to do that because he wants to, us to know. He wants us to see that what Jesus is doing is different from what the others are doing. The others are being controlled by their emotions. Jesus is just having the emotion. He's just being in, in the moment. He, he's weeping because he's angry or he feels sad or whatever. He's just having the emotion, but it's not, it's not driving the decisions he makes before and after that. Jesus feels as we do, yet he continues in that relationship with the Father. And this is what we must learn. This is what we must learn if we are really going to understand what it means to be a Christian. Will we trust as Jesus did, or will we continue to fall prey to our emotions and even judge God? We can participate or not. The emotions will always be there. No matter how much at peace we are, we are still going to have emotions. There, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just what do we do with them? As I lean into his love for me, I still have emotions. But I'm learning little by little not to let them make me make choices. I'm learning to say, I feel this way, God, but I, I'm still going to do what I believe it is you're putting before me to do. They don't control me quite as much. I'm not by any means perfect. 
None of us will ever be perfect. But I'm learning to seek his way. I'm learning that when I do seek his way, in spite of my emotions, I find a peace. I find a joy. Even though looking at it from a human point of view, it's like, well, that can't be possible. It can't be possible to have peace and joy in this situation. But if we are walking with him, we do find peace and joy. Even in the midst of the worst things you can possibly imagine. And so I, I invite you to, to just kind of learn to be a little bit more self-aware and learn to ha be having a conversation with your Father in heaven about the things that happen. And see if He doesn't, little by little, lead you to a place where you can see the path that He's asking you to go, even though your emotions would take you in a different direction. And see if you don't find peace and joy in that connection to your Father. Let's pray together. God, we thank, we thank you so much for your love for us. You know that we all struggle with, with our emotions, with everything that goes on in our life. We have a lot of questions. We question you all the time. And we get caught up following our emotions instead of following you. God, we pray that as we come to the table today, that at least, at least at this moment, we give, we give those up to you. We give up being controlled by anything but you so that you can be the one in control. We know that Jesus died on the cross and his body was broken, his blood shed so that we could be connected to you, so that we could know your love and walk with you through everything that happens in this world. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.